All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live on the, the radio at WCSB Cleveland. Now, this morning, we are going to be very much blessed to have one of the greatest guitar players in the world ever. Uh, Glenn Schwartz is here. Glenn, can you hear me out there? Yeah, I can hear you good. Glenn, it is a pleasure to have one of the greatest guitar players ever on my show. So, Glenn, I, I thank you very much for your time, and I'll let you take the show over right now and play what you're going to play. Okay, good. Uh, I played at Jimi Hendrix's last birthday party. Wow. It was very sad. I talked to him, and I told him that Jesus loves you, and he died on the cross for you, and he rejected Christ as his Savior, which is not good. And then I talked to Eric Clapton, and I told Eric Clapton that Jesus died on the cross for you. And he said, well, Christ is in all of us. Well, he was a liar, too. And then I talked to Jeff Beck, and he heard nothing. And I talked to Led Zeppelin, and they rejected Christ. And I talked to many musical stars. Michael Bloomfield, he rejected Christ. And they found him dead with a bottle of Valium near him in San Francisco. And I talked to the Lemon Pipers. Now they, from Cincinnati, they believed in Jesus. And very few people that I've talked to, the Grateful Dead, and I'll be grateful when they're all dead. They rejected Christ, and they were nothing but a bunch of dopers. And I used to use LSD, and I used marijuana, and I didn't used to get high, I used to stay high. And every other word was a swear word out of my mouth, and I cheated on my wife. I made other girls pregnant. I was strictly no good, and my father gave up on me. He said, you're strictly no good, I can't do nothing with them. I ran away from home. I stole cars. I, I drove a car right into Lake Erie. I watched people die in front of me. And I thought to myself in 1968, what would it be like to be good? When I quit the James Gang, they threw me out. They didn't want me no more. And the other bands that I was with, they kicked me out. They didn't want me in their bands no more. I was missing jobs. And I was strictly no good, as my own father told me. You're strictly no good, he said. And in 1968, I thought to myself, what would it be like to be good? And someone said, go down to Sunset Strip. I was in Hollywood. And they said, there's a man down there preaching the gospel. And I went down to Arthur Blessed. And he gave an altar call, like Billy Graham gives the altar calls. And I came forward. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And that was 47 years ago. And my life has never been the same since. My life has been wonderful. It's been up and down. I've gone 22 days without food. And I took beatings with horse whips on a farm for seven years. I got beat with horse whips over 100 strikes until I couldn't stand the pain no more. And, Glenn, do we have a song that we're going to play? And the song is called this, Wagon Wheels. Yeah, them wagon wheels, they going to carry me. I threw them golden fields. For my soul has gotten free Yeah, them wagon wheels They be rolling long and low Them wagon wheels They be rolling long and low I shoot them golden fields that you will never know. You'll never know.
and wagon wheel. They go and carry young Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. You're welcome. An incredible song. When did you write that? I wrote that about 30 years ago. It sounded excellent. Thank you. I've been playing the guitar for um, 64, 64 years now. I started when I was 11 years old, and I never knew my guitar lessons. The teacher yelling at me had me crying. I went home, never knew my guitar lessons. I got all left on my report card. I ran away from home, I stole cars, I pushed cars into Lake Erie, I set cars on fire, I caused a man to die one night. Well, let me ask you a question here about your career, if I, if I can here. Talk a little bit about, you know, wh- while I have you here, before we have you do the next song, about uh, Janis Joplin at the Fillmore. Yes, I talked to her before she died, and I told her that Jesus died on the cross for you, and she rejected it. And we put a sticker on her leg. It said, Jesus is peace. And she was drunk. And the hell's angels hated her. They tried to kill her. Why? Because she was talking back to him and getting smart with him and getting drunk and yelling at him. And they did not like her at all. Okay. Well, Glenn, what's our next song going to be? The next song is going to be Fear and Doom, all in its wicked land. See the mother of harlots with a golden cup in her hand. She's got you drunk on the wine of her fornication. She's the mother of harlots, a filthy abomination. The Catholic Church is the great whore that sits on seven mountains. God didn't give, send a pope. God sent Jesus Christ, not a pope. Okay. Now, let me ask you this real quick about uh, Dwayne Allman and the hour. He was with a band called Hourglass, and yes. y- you opened for Dwayne Allman. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, I talked to Dwayne Allman. I was very good friends with him, and we jammed together, and we played together, and we talked together. And I was with also with Greg Allman, his brother, and I talked to Greg. Now, Greg was full of swear words and committing sins with Jane Fonda, and he was not a good man. But Dwayne Allman accepted Jesus Christ as the Savior two weeks before he died in that motorcycle wreck. And I talked to Dwayne, and Dwayne and me hugged, and we talked together, and we shared scriptures together. And Jane, and, and Dwayne Allman accepted Jesus as his Savior. Now, you also played, if I'm not mistaken, six shows with Led Zeppelin. Yes. What was that like? Not good. They were a bunch of dopers, swearing, cheating, lying. Were they good musicians, though? No, they weren't any good. They're no good. <laughs> Jeff Beck was probably the best player of all. Jeff Beck, whom I knew, he played good slide guitar. He did that song, Shapes of Things. Just teach me to despise shapes of things. Will time make men more wise? Shapes of things before my eyes. 
and then the lead singer whom I knew, Keith Ralph, he grabbed the microphone and got electrocuted to death and dropped dead. Wow. It's a, a, a tough story. Um, the military. Sergeant Meekins, can you talk a little bit about the, the military days? Yes, he hated me. <laughs> he had me down on my hands and knees, and he was smacking me on the back of the head. And he was kicking me and punching me. And he said, I hope you break a gut. Two months later, my guts broke, and I almost died. My temperature went up to 106 degrees. My gut broke, and he, he put a curse on me. Sergeant Meekins, he was a wicked man. Well, out of all these experiences that you've had, Glenn, is there any positive things that have come out of this? Nothing positive, all negative. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we turn the thing over and let's be positive now. Let's play a positive song. Okay, I got a positive song for okay. you. Okay, all right, let's play something. The one thing I can say is Glenn's always the happiest guy I've ever met. <laughs> well, it, it, seems, it seems that way. Yeah. But, but let's, have a, let's have you guys play another song. Okay, you can't know happiness until you know sadness. Okay. Okay, here's another song for you. Fear and Doom? Let's it do it. It goes like this.
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Let me talk, let me ask you, Glenn, if I may, about the days of Pacific Gas and Electric. Yes, yes. Those were mighty times. They certainly were. And uh, what year did you start with them? I started with them in 1968. Okay, how long did it last? I left the James Gang, Jimmy Fox, Dale Peters, Joe Walsh. I taught Joe Walsh how to play when he was 14 years old. 14 years old. Where at? Uh, in my basement of my house. Huh. In um, 1967. 67. Amazing. I was already 27 years old. He was only 19. I'm going to go see him in a couple of days. I'm going down to um, Blossom Music Center or in West Virginia, and we're going to jam with him and and the um, that other group, Bad Company. Bad Company. And I, I gave Joe Walsh lessons. I taught him how to play when he was 14 years old. I was already 27. I'm already 77 now. Life begins at 80. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard that before. Hey, Glenn, let me ask you. When you first met Joe, yeah. did, you, did you see the talent in him that later emerged? No, he wasn't that good. He was, he was playing all right. He was with the measles in Kent, and he was playing pretty good. But then I taught him. I gave him lessons, and I showed him how to pull the strings and, and how to uh, make it talk. What did you show him that he didn't know? Uh, I showed him this. And he said, good. He said, I, I dig it. <laughs> wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> Glenn, what is the, in your opinion... I'm going to trust you because you are the expert. Um, the greatest rock and roll riff you've ever heard? Oh, boy, that's a hard one. Uh, rock and roll, I'm with a rock that never rolls. I hate rock and roll. Okay. That's Alan Freed's greed in 1951, invented a rock and roll. Yes. That's how he lost his soul. The real music is gospel music, not okay. rock and roll. All right, well, how about the greatest, the greatest riff of any song that you've ever heard? Uh, what I play, what I play. <laughs> well, you, well, play something for me. Okay. Now, you've, I would assume you've probably heard almost every great guitar player that's ever played music. I heard a lot of them, yeah. What is your opinion? I'm going to throw a few names at you. You just kind of give me a couple, uh, two or three word answer about what you think of them. Dick mm -hmm. Dale. Dick Dale? Yeah. I don't know nothing about him. Okay. All right. Jimmy Page. No good. A phony. George Harrison. Bastard. Okay, Eric Clapton. False. Now, how would you, if I, if I, this is going to be a, a question I've been thinking how to ask you this one. How would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as a sinner that's no good. But Jesus makes me better. All right, but that, that'll be a good lead into our next song. Yes. Okay. What song would that be? Uh, the next song would be... Uh, gospel. Um, um, Seek Him. 
Seek him. You shall seek him when you find him with all your heart. Okay. Okay, here we go in the key of G. And we've got Colin and Tyler backing me up. And Sam is with us in the studio here. And Gene, my brother Gene Schwartz is home. He's a good bass player. He's been with me for years now. And uh, he's been with me for uh, 64, 70, 76 years. Here's a song called Seek Him, which I wrote when I was on the farm about 30 years ago. <laughs> Glenn, thank you. You're welcome. Glenn, we have a person on the line that would like to speak with you. Sure, we're glad to talk to him. Okay, let, let me give the number out. Uh, if you'd like to speak with Glenn Schwartz, you certainly can do that at 216-687-3515. Let me play this before we will have the first caller of the evening. Okay. So 
portions of the following broadcast the might, following be broadcast might be found objectionable to certain members of the listening, members audience. Of listening audience. Therefore, Therefore WCSB, WCSB Cleveland, Cleveland recommends, recommends listener, discretion. listener discretion. The views the and views opinions expressed, expressed are not necessarily, are not those, necessarily of the of those of the station staff the school or affiliates or the station staff and are for educational, informative, and educational or entertainment purposes only. Or entertainment purposes Once again, only. listener Once discretion again, is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, Glenn, we're back. Um, caller, you're on the air. Uh, first of all, Ray, thank you very much for uh, having uh, Glenn Schwartz uh, perform for us over the years. This, this is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. And, Glenn, thank you very much for everything that you've, uh, you've done in your lifetime. And uh, besides your beautiful music and your pure music, uh, you speak your mind, uh, Mr. Schwartz, and and that's something um, that uh, we we don't have too much of anymore. So it's a beautiful thing uh, when you can uh, combine uh, music and, and a beautiful mind. Thank you. And I just was going to ask you, uh, we've talked about uh, rock performers and so on. You are such an individual performer that I know you do not need anybody else uh, to influence you or tell you where to go or where you've been. But I was just wondering, out of curiosity, since I'm a music fan, were there any blues performers that you met along your journey that might have given you some inspiration? Oh, uh. Sun House. Tell me who's that writing John the Revelator? He wrote the book of the Seven Seals. I talked to him. Was there anything in his music or what he, he told you maybe when you met him that might have given you inspiration? Yes, he told me that Jesus died on the cross for me. And then I talked to him at the film at the um, in California on near Sun. Uh, at a small coffee house where he played. And I played his dobro for him. And he went and, and he did a what? song called Why Don't You Live So God Can Use You. Right. Hey, and Glenn, um, thank you very much. You're welcome. And my last question was, besides, besides Jesus Christ, who would be the most influential person in your life? Oh. Uh, me. <laughs> Thank you very much. You don't, have any, you don't have to add any more to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Schwartz. You're welcome. He's one of our very finest callers. Uh, you can call us mm. at 216-687-3515 if you'd like to speak with Glenn Schwartz. Uh, Glenn, let me ask you, you, you mentioned Sun House. Um, the, were there any other blues performers that you enjoyed playing with? Not really. Okay. B.B. Uh, King was drunk, and he gave me a hard time and talked back to me when I told him about Jesus. Okay. He didn't want to hear it. Here's a question about, um, did you ever run into anybody that is of another religion that you were able to come to terms with? I oh, mean, yeah, a lot of them of other religions, but they wouldn't hear me. Seals and Croft, I played on Sunset Strip with Seals and Croft, and they were in the Baha'i and the false religions. And I told them that Jesus died on the cross for them, and they would not hear me. Okay. Well, Glenn, do you have another song for us? Yes. Um, you want to play that song, Alice? Do you want to play that song, Alice? Yeah, I got a song in the key of D, uh, False Prophets, They Be Everywhere. <clears throat> Okay, it goes like this. Okay. 
cannot tell. Thank you, Glenn. You're welcome. Glenn, I wanted to ask you about one other guitar player that uh, slipped my mind, Phil Keggy. Oh, not good. Okay. Uh, He's got that Catholic thing in him. Rome sits on seven mountains. And uh, he's got the false translations of the Bible. And uh, not good. He's real fast on the guitar, but but he's empty. He's empty. His life is empty. Okay. Glenn, what about Roy Buchanan? I played at his last birthday party, and I witnessed him and talked to him. He's possessed of the devil, and he hung himself because he was an evil person. He hung himself. Two weeks before he died, I talked to him before he hung himself. And you know what he told me? He said, the devil is in me. Glenn, let me ask you about some other genres of music. Have you ever tried to play classical guitar? No, I don't like classical guitar. Okay. Could you play another song for us? <clears throat> yeah, sure. How about a gospel song, Glenn? Yeah, let's play... Uh... Okay, we, we have about ten minutes to go, so just, you know, you could play... Okay, good. I was standing by my window On a dark and the cloudy day when I seen that horse come a rolling for to carry my father away. Yes, and I follow close behind him, try to hold up and be brave, but I could not hide my sorrow.
Thank you. You're welcome. Glenn, listen, we have two phone calls for you. Are you are you up to taking one? Sure. All right, caller, you're on the air. Hi, uh, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, my name is Ben, and um, thank you very much for playing tonight. It's been a great joy hearing your music. Uh, I'm not a big uh, big uh, expert on music, but uh, I'm in my 50s, so I haven't seen about as much of life as you have. My question to you is, though, given you know what you've said this evening, uh, it sounds like... Uh, you uh, kind of rejected um, what the 1960s uh, kind of assumed to have been st- stood for, which is you know challenging authority and uh, and uh, you know I mean you know the, the music scene in the 1960s was heavily influenced by uh, movements against the Vietnam War and the, and the mistake that that made that that, that generated those wars. Um, how how would you respond to somebody who who, who, who would want to, who want to know what your message is in terms of the, your your the role of your music and your philosophy to uh, to uh, uh, politics and and government and social change? Uh, have you are you at all concerned about 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 policy and government and social change in your in your in your outlook in, in terms of uh, what you plan to do in your life for the, your remaining days? And uh, I'll take the answer your answer off of you. Yes, the Bible says separate yourself from them people. Uh, God didn't give the Constitution, he gave restitution. He didn't give the Bill of Rights, he gave righteousness. He didn't give the Pledge of Allegiance, he gave allegiance to him. Those are all worldly and those are wicked and they're going to burn in hell forever and ever. The, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Only a few are saved and are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven when they die. Okay, Glenn, we have one more call. Okay, good. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, a uh, couple quick questions. Um, Jesus Christ um, tolerated many, many people, all types of people. I mean, I know you seem to be very um, uh, opinionated about what you've lived and how you've lived and, and what you've been through. And I, I really respect that, truly, because you, you sound like a, a pure human being. Mm. But. Jesus Christ tolerated many, many people, and I was just wondering if you are truly into Jesus Christ, then you, you have to be much more uh, open to tolerating many, many people. I am, but I don't tolerate them. Jesus called them serpents and devils, and he said, you are of your father the devil, and his love he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And but love, love should be the first thing for everybody. 
You know what I mean? You know, Jesus Christ is one part of it. You know, and that's that. Many people take that path, but whatever path I think you choose in life, I think as long as you love yourself and love others, I, I think that's where where it's at. And I was going to ask you, did you ever get a chance, Mr. Schwartz, to meet Johnny Cash? Because I truly believe he was a pure human being as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Johnny Cash. Yeah, I knew Johnny Cash, and I played. And, uh, and he was uh, a believer. He read the Bible. He prayed. And June Cash also. He had scriptures written on their gravestones. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did quote the whole Bible on the tape. So that's good. That's good. Well, Glenn, I really want to say on behalf of all the WCSB family and all of our listenership out there, um, thank you for spending the, the hour with us and, the, and your time and your efforts. I really appreciate everything. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure. And is there anything that you'd like to end the show with? A song or a talk? A, a song. A song, okay. Uh, How about All Night Long? All Night Long. Yes, here's a song called All Night Long. I'm talking about Paul and Silas too. One sang a song while the other prayed through. <laughs>
Thank you, Glenn. You're welcome. <clears throat> Glenn, we're going to do one more quick one because I we have another interview at two o'clock. Okay, good, good. Okay. So four minutes, three and a half, four minutes. We play Mountain Top. Uh, yeah. More, one more quick song. Yes, sir. Okay, Mountain Top. Okay, thank you. Okay, most men can make it up to the mountain. They're mountain climbers. They can get up to the top, but they don't know how to come down. The big stars, they're big and heady and high-minded, but they never can come down, and they'll die up there. They'll die coming down. I went up to the mountaintop, and I came down the same way, and I spent seven long years, 22 days without food, getting beat with horse whips, and getting kicked and punched out by my own so-called friends. And now I'm almost 80 years old, and I got victory in Jesus Christ, my Savior. No, I ain't gonna fight it. His spirit has taken me there. I cannot doubt that lovers in the air. Surrender my will. To the one who keeps calling my name They tell me once your heart's there You'll never be the same I hear mockers and scoffers Just outside of my door time they're just a little a louder than before I hear Jesus making promises that I must now claim they tell me once your heart's there you'll never be Thank you, sir. I appreciate Glenn Schwartz, thank you. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure. It's been an honor to have you on the program, and I really appreciate your time and effort and all of your insight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Glenn, before I let you go, if I could ask you for a promo for my radio show to say your name and you're listening to The Ray Carr Show. Yes, my name is Glenn Schwartz, and I'm listening to The Ray Carr Show. And Ray has been a wonderful help to me tonight, and he's been a blessing by uh, giving me freedom and allowing me to speak my mind. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome.